great to see you, man. As we speak, I am in Toronto. Where are you right now? I'm located uh, in a little town called Ladysmith on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. How is it over there now? Like, we're starting to finally get the warm weather kicking in. I mean, we had some, like, rain, even some snow flurries a couple of days ago. But now it looks like the sun and warmth is finally starting to settle in a bit. No, it's been BS. (laughs) It's not... not it it's like uh it's sort of like sunny for like 15 minutes very west coast sunny yeah. for 15 minutes and then just uh no you're not having a fire you're not having a fire tonight no <laughs> go inside <laughs> oh my goodness man it's been a wild couple of years man how have you been dealing with the whole world with covid and the stuff that we've seen on the news and social media i mean it's still going on now as we speak but, yeah. um, man, how has it affected you emotionally, personally, and, of course, career-wise? Yeah, you know, it was a tale of two pandemics for me. The first, uh, so 2020, we come off the road. Uh, mm-hmm. I was actually in Ontario, um, northwest Ontario, playing, like, Fort Francis and areas like that. Uh, killer towns, man. And they were really, like, digging the show. And I thought, man, I'm in my 40s. This is going to take off, finally. And then, yeah, squash. But um, I came home and um, admittedly, I was, I had the blues. I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, So I grew a gut and grew some apathy and uh, just kind of like, I wasn't writing songs. I didn't know what to write about. I mean, I live in a cul-de-sac, it's chill and it's cool, but Mm -hmm. I didn't, um, I didn't have anything to write about because I I get, I get those, that inspiration for writing. Uh, from traveling and and seeing new things and meeting new people um and and so then with the help of a couple of old friends and new friends and um you know that inspiration that muse came back around again and uh you know the the new songs started coming and and i needed to be a better you know husband father and just snap out of it and just deal just deal and and move on what did you learn about yourself during this pandemic that maybe you didn't know about yourself beforehand Damn, Rudy, that's a good question. Um, th- that I'm I'm more resilient than I gave myself credit for. I think um, I had to do some growing up. I'm an only child, a little narcissistic by nature. You have to be a little bit, I think, to do this job. Yeah. Um, look at me, you know. Um, and and that there actually is more to me than just songwriter and touring guy. There, there was, I did a little bit of like, you know, neighbor goes, Hey, come on this fishing trip. Yep. Okay. Just saying yes to some things that maybe normally I didn't have time for in the past. Um, and stepping outside of that, just like, like all, like always musician, all, you know, get getting out of that gear because you had no choice anyway. So find new things to enjoy, just going on hikes and, and, and getting my mind in shape, getting my body in better shape. And, um, and, and spending time writing about different subjects, maybe than, than just self, you know, and, and, uh, yeah. So quite a few things sounds like, <laughs> No, I so agree with you about what you're saying. Whereas before I know I was the same way I would be like, no, no, I don't have time for this. Now I've been really trying to make time when somebody says, Hey, can we do something like I'm supposed to actually do something tonight, but because of work, I just can't for timing wise. But yeah. I have been making time when somebody's like, hey, can we get together? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make the time to do it, you know, yeah. because so much has changed. And you realize the people who the people you miss and you never realized it and you missed their company and conversation. Yeah. And it's yeah, it really did open up my eyes to a lot of things. And yes, I had to work off my gut also, buddy. You're not the <laughs> only one. Well, and, 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 you know, talking about making time for friends and stuff live now, that's the thing is, is, uh, pandemic aside, I had, um, uh, you know, I, I had these wonderful grandparents and my grandmother lived to 98, but I didn't get to see her that last year because I couldn't go, couldn't go into her care home. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, she was always very, very encouraging about, uh, excuse me, me being a, uh, a performer and an artist, um, so we lost, we lost grandma during the pandemic. And then also my, my own mom had quite a few health problems and, and, um, she made it through, but that that's the big thing. That's the big takeaway is to live right now because that's all we got, you know, and it sounds a little bit cliche, but it's, I think now, now that we've done it, 
we yeah. know that it's cliches are, are, are sometimes cliches for a reason. You speak the absolute truth on that one. And something else that you said, too, that's sticking in my head when you said about the look at me, look at me. People don't admit to this. I, it's funny. When I speak to schools, <laughs> yeah. one of the things I say is you have to have a certain type of ego for this business because it is about look at me. I want you to pay attention to me. But it's how you want people to pay attention to you. And you're hoping that they're paying attention to you for the right way. Am I, am I explaining it correctly? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I mean, when I, when we all start, I can't speak for other artists, but I mean, when you start, uh, writing songs and chasing down songs and performing live. And I think that, um, you kind of get, at least I did, I got caught up in, Oh, I mean, you know, just getting caught up in the nightlife and and things like that, especially during my time on, I'm on a little Island now when I'm the big Island, but, um, you know, getting away from Vancouver for me was good. Um, but went back in the, when I was in my twenties, I mean, I'm 42 now snooze. Um, and <laughs> sorry, uh, when I, yeah, when I was kind of rolling over there and just getting started, I was kind of wild and, and I would get distracted, you know, yeah. and, and I think that's natural, but then all of a sudden, you know, you find you're making your way through your thirties and maybe, you've, maybe you released a couple of records under your belt and, and you've had some, some true things to say about your experiences. Then you, the, the whole, the whole impetus behind me making records and performing is that connection yeah. in, in a, in a deeper way. Um, and, and yeah, it is a little bit like, yeah, you do have to believe that you have something worthy of connecting to them with, because after a while, after time, you realize it's not about me at all. It's about, yeah. it's a meeting. A concert is a, is like a meeting. And even making that record that they're, they're going to hopefully purchase or stream or whatever they're going to do with it. Those, those messages and those songs are like meetings, they're connections to people. And hopefully what you're saying is resonating. So less, maybe less about attention as I get older and, and more about saying something true. And we lost that during the pandemic. And as much as people want to talk about, uh, yes, we could do virtual concerts. Virtual concerts and being in a venue are completely yeah. two different yeah. things when it comes to the energy between the artists and fans. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I, well, I would, I'd be here in this room here. Pants optional because they can't even see. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I would be doing, you know, and you'd finish the song and then. Like, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, you'd see anywhere from 35 to 150 folks, you know, tuning in and, 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 and they're coming and going and you're kind of going, Oh no. Oh, you see though the numbers are going down. Maybe I shouldn't have played that hoodie cover or whatever, you know, it's, it, it's so strange, you know, yeah. being in the room, there's nothing like it. It's a, a concert's a living thing and it's different every night. It is. It is. And so glad we're getting back to that. Um, you know, I was reading over your bio and your history and the things that you've done. Uh, the thing that is sticking in my head, because I'm an old school guy, and I used to watch Davy Crockett. Where did you discover, and folks who may not realize what we're talking about, where did you discover that song? Because you did something with that song for the family. Well, I did. I did. And um, and I, I remember that, you know, you you lose things from your childhood memory wise as time passes. But I remember that as clear as day. And that was the jam. That was a jam in my mind. My dad had this big spindle of 45s. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, there's Herman's Hermits. Mrs. Brown, you've got a lovely daughter, <laughs> you know. Uh, and i uh, never done that in an interview before. Um, and you know, at the, at the end of the spindle was this Davy Crockett theme song from, from this TV show, I guess. And it was from a T I used to watch the, the show as a kid. Yeah. 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 So that, and, and the song is just a, to me was just a banger. And I think I was six, five years old even, and just running around in tidy whities and like, just, I mean, there's a lot of really cool and, and they're all long gone now, but, but they all got me started on the path by like enabling me to be really freaky and really ridiculous when I was a kid and sing songs and, you know, Auntie Doris and Grandma Phyllis, the, the aforementioned Grandma Phyllis and, and Grandpa Bob, they'd have, 
you know, even before my time, they'd have like these kitchen parties where they'd get like a bathtub full of beer and sing songs and play instruments. And I missed all that, but somehow I figured that was kind of passed down to me uh, from, you know, the fifties and and sixties. That is long gone. My family would do sort of the same thing on their own. It's, it's, it's sad when you don't have where the Friday night or Saturday or even Sunday where folks would just show up at your house and then the next thing you know, you got a backyard party or you've got a household party and people yeah. are just around. And of course, the parents are going, here, I'm going to put a song on, watch my son dance here or something, you know? Like cool, those... do the thing. Yeah, do the, exactly. <laughs> do the thing. Your thing was sing yeah. the Crockett song. Yeah, go ahead. Man, I... Davy, Davy hey, Crockett, Crockett, king of the wild frontier. I think that's how it went or something like that. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, totally. man. Great, great times. But you took that further in making this into a career. When did you figure out that mm. this is what you wanted to do? Mm. Well, I got pretty dorky in high school, Rudy. Um, and I didn't, you know, was a real thin guy and like in the friend zone with, you know, lots Ooh. of gals that were that were pals, you know. Oh. But, you, but you learn a lot. Just listen to them. Listen. You know, when when Johnny Football Hero won't take him to prom, that's just like, okay, I'll bring my saxophone over. We'll have a good time. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it, you know, uh, I, I didn't really, I, being that only child, I didn't have a roadmap or, of an older brother or sister to kind of follow a lead or anything. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, uh, my interests were waning. I loved baseball immensely. Um, but I wasn't going to be uh, Roy Halliday. So, um, it was like, and, but I, I knew I could sing. I joined uh, a couple of pretty shitty bands, you know, in high school. And, and, um, I know, I, you know, that, that attention, you know, that, that feeling of, oh, that's what, that's what Ryan is. That's his identity. He's, he's the singer in the band, you know? Um, and, you know, and then I, yeah, I just, just got into like, um, being the, being the age I was at, you know, Pearl Jam was huge. Um, Soundgarden, the whole Seattle thing was blowing up. And those were, you know, there's a lot of great songs came out of that era. Uh, those were real people saying real things. And I gravitated towards that. And so that's the kind of bands I was in for years. Um, and then over time, you'd kind of develop your own voice. Obviously, you stop kind of wearing your influences on your sleeve so much, so to speak. And um all of a sudden you're you're playing you know folk festivals and and uh and now now they're they're sh you know because i never found never found like my genre that was always the thing with me like what is he is he folky is he rocky now now they're we're releasing to you know country radio uh in the states and us and i don't care where you put me just put me on stage like if it resonates with with fans of any genre that's neither here nor there i just want to play you know, let's jump right into it because you got new music yeah. coming out, man. What's going on? Well, one more fire came out uh, a week ago today, and uh, yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, new single. Um, I wrote it obviously during the pandemic. I did tons of writing that second year. Once the once the I got rolling, you know, um, and uh, yeah, one more fire is is, is sort of just a reminder for myself and hopefully to all of us to just kind of, you know, grab a hold of those good things now while we can one more fire, one more chance, one more opportunity to maybe mend a fence, one more chance for me to um, get back on the road and, and do what I love and connect with uh, the fans and friends and make new, make new friends and make new connections. And uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's turned into a little bit of my mantra, uh, you know, these last, uh, few months as we leading up to it and we shot a video for it and couldn't be prouder of the song man it's fun upbeat but also says some truth too is the is the song with an ep or an album yeah so it's the lead single off of an album that will ultimately be finished uh this august and uh tons of songs in the can can't wait we're recording at the warehouse in Vancouver, Brian Adams studio. And yes. uh, yeah, <laughs> Brian's always hanging around. He's cool. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be out. I would say early 23, the whole, Fantas the whole record. I'm just curious, man. Those, those, uh, those young gals who put you in the friend zone, have they ever contacted you uh, after, you know, the six, ah, tell me a little bit about this, man. 
Well, it's okay. I come from such a small town yeah. that, that I've, I've kept in contact with most of them for years. Mm -hmm. and I mean, and some of them probably don't, you know, they don't even care. They've, they've gone on and, and what I do, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Just, that's just Ryan. And uh, there he is at the produce section at our local grocery store. Like, Hey, what's going on? But um, no, there's like one, one in mind, um, uh, this girl that used to play uh, in the stage band with me who played saxophone um, and she, you know, she'd give me notes on, on, on like what, what was, uh, what was appropriate and what was, what was cool. And, and basically it was like, don't try to be cool. Just be yourself. And, mm -hmm. and there's, there you go. Mandy, Mandy Rogerson, her name's Mandy Ryan now, but she was, she was, <laughs> she was, she was <laughs> She was rife with good information back in uh, 1996. Uh, but have you had anything where, like, I've had it where I've gone back and I've, I've reconnected with friends from school and, and some of my uh, female friends, and where one or two of them would say, why didn't you ask me out? And you're like, I didn't even know I could. You yeah. never let me know. Well, if you did, you would. And you're like, now you tell me after, like, so many years. Have you had that experience? I'm just curious. Uh, no, I don't, you know, I'm not allowed. I'm married. So I don't talk to, I don't talk to anybody <laughs> anymore. <laughs> That's the smartest thing to say. I don't even speak to people. <laughs> I'm going to leave it to that. <laughs> but you know, oh my goodness, I'm going to be laughing all day long on this one. Um, since we're got new music out and things are opening up, yeah. uh, are you going to be back? Are you back on the road again? Yeah, always, always on the road. There's some festivals uh, coming up this summer. We're playing Sunfest, which is a big deal out here. So we'll be playing alongside, uh, opening for uh, Dallas Smith that night. Oh, cool. Um, we've known Dallas, and, and my drummer and Dallas's bassist are best friends, so it's all very incestuous. Uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> and um, uh, we're doing this other one. It's called um, the Snug Cove Music Festival. Oh. That's a it's a one one day deal, but it's uh John and Roy. I don't know if you even if you guys know some of these bands, but Current Swell. Do you know Current Swell? No, no. Yeah, it's very West Coast. So so Current Swell, John and Roy, Jesse Roper, and um Daniel Wesley. Oh for four. Okay. Well, that's okay. It's a yeah, it's a big deal out here, man. <laughs> well, no, because here's what I'm saying, because now that we're hearing these names. Yeah. We're going to go and we're going to, this is the one good thing about with social media and stuff. We can right. go discover who these artists are. And then we go, Hey, West coast, can you bring it down here? East coast and a little bit oh. South so we can get you all down here in Ontario, yeah. because we got a lot of festivals and we'd love to have you guys come here. I want to come back and play the shoe. That's what I want. To ah. do. That's so, some of my favorite, the really personal moments, like, cause, cause we're all fans first. Right. Yeah. And, and so if I say the name Teddy Fury, you know who that is? Yes. Okay. So my first time playing the shoe, there's nobody there. Cause it's a Monday. It was a bookman. <laughs> it was a bookman gig, you know? Yeah. 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 Davey bookman. And, uh, and so, but he, he was gracious enough to have us out. Craig Lasky, Oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, this is getting pretty inside. You should, you yeah, yeah, should yeah, yeah. talk on the phone probably. It's probably screwing up your interview, but no, no, because people are going to go, let me check these names. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I show up and I don't know, sometime mid 2000s when I really started touring and getting out to Ontario and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, nobody was there, maybe 15 people. 15 people at the horseshoes, a sad time. But we. <laughs> We gave, we gave it everything we had, you know? And uh, so I'm packing up and Teddy comes up to me. Teddy runs the front bar for those of you who wonder what the hell I'm talking about, but Teddy runs the front bar and he comes up and he says, Hey man, you guys are from BC, huh? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You're Teddy Fury. I'm like, you're a, you're a legend. And, and he's like, Hey man, you sound great. Don't give up. Please come back. And I, that just, I was like, ah, and I still get chicken skin telling that because he's seen it all. Um, and, and sure enough, we came back and, um, you know, we had the help of, we knew some people in Toronto by that point, And we, it was a little bit more full, you know, a little bit more like 70 people, 80 people, you know, it, they're, but they're all pressed up front and there he was again. And we show up and he's like, because he meets so many people, of course, but goddamn, he goes, sorry, sorry, I'm swearing, but okay. he says, Ryan from Ryan from BC. I couldn't believe he remembered. I wow. it was just, uh, just, uh, I was astounded. And, uh, and, you know, like they got all the board tape from Warren Zevon when Z Zevon played there and Zevon's one of my heroes and just, it's, it's uh, a legendary place and I hope they have me back. 
You know, one thing I I needed to tell you. Yeah, no, no. And one thing I want to add this to the fans who are watching this whole interview on Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, RudyBlairMedia.com. When you're ever in the audience of a band and maybe there's only like 15 or 10 or whatever, that's really the time to stick around because that's when the band may decide, okay, let's try some stuff that maybe they would never do in a full house. And you could get some real special treats yeah. During those kind of shows, those are the ones you really want to stick around for. Yep, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I was in, um, you know, before this was a solo operation and I was <laughs> calling all the shots. I was in a lot of democracies where we would, you know, we would just try, try things. If, it, if it's a weird night, hey, let's see if they do this. And you maybe, OK, you know what? We haven't played it in three years, but let's play that Pink Floyd cover and see how that goes. You know, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Look, Ryan, I got to say, man. Congratulations on this stellar career. Look, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the awards that you've won, man. Oh, well, I haven't won that many. So, uh, well, I mean, what was it, three? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know. It's. Um, uh, are you talking about the Vancouver Island Music Yeah, Award? yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you know what? It's funny because then they'll go, so what, what becomes the Vancouver Island Music Awards? Then there's the, 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 the West Coast Music Awards. I know. Now there's just the Calgary. If you're from Calgary, it's the Calgary Music Awards. Ah, I'm happy to get them, but not why I do it. I look, believe me. I look. Growing up, I just remember it was the Grammys, the Junos, yeah. the Oscars, uh, Golden Globe, and I think really that was it. I can have it's the Rudy Blair Awards. Everybody's got an award, so. Trust me, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. It's like the Oprah show. You get a prize, you get a prize, <laughs> you, get a prize. <laughs> you get a prize. Exactly. But look, man, if anybody deserves the prize, it's you, man. An amazing career. You're a great spokesperson. And you're a great representation of from the days of Gordon Lightfoot to what's going on today, man. You are part, to me, of that legacy. And I love Thank the you, fact man. You are who you are and what you do and how you speak to us through your music. Congratulations on the new music, man. I hope to God at some point in time, you and I do this one-on-one, man, because I, I would love this kind of conversation. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Rudy.